Hello and welcome to Party of Five, presented by FCSI The Americas, the show where a roundtable of consultants discuss their past, present, and future of the food service and hospitality industries. I hope you enjoy this, our first of four episodes. In our first episode, we're going to sit down with some of the most experienced and highly decorated consultants in their field. In our second one, we're going to sit down with a new crop of consultants quickly making their mark on this industry. And of course, I'm your host, Wade Kaler, Executive Director of FCSI The Americas. We're so excited to debut this new series. Be on the lookout for new episodes coming in 2023. Thanks you all for joining us. I, I want to get started by kind of going back to the beginning. And uh, I always like to hear about how things have changed and that's what this whole project is about. So we'll start with Karen and kind of go around the table and tell me about the first project that you remember where you were the first full project manager. So this was finally your first one where you get to be in charge of the whole thing. Oh my. <laughs> you know, you, you warned me about this and, and, and here I am. Uh, boy, I would say it was um, helping someone open their first restaurant okay. uh, in Seattle, Washington. Small restaurant, large, uh, medium? Large um, and very unaware of what this industry <laughs> was about. And in fact, it's one reason I've shifted more to non-commercial work mm -hmm. because um, restaurants need a lot of help and there's scope creep all over the place. Yeah. You know, once you, once you begin working with a single owner, you become their best friend and uh, you know, they think they have you know, access to you yeah. uh, at, at all times day and night and it's you can't make enough money yeah. to be honest and what was uh were you actually from like concept opening or what were you actually helping them with on that? from con concept. visioning concept all the way through developed all the recipes wow. trained the chefs that's a big big project it was huge. yeah time consuming especially in the restaurant yes such that another reason i shifted is when you have a project that that's an, is that intense, how many can you do at yeah. once, right? So your capacity yeah. is really limited. Yeah. Dick, what about you? Well, the first one I rem really has memories is uh, doing the uh, uh, Dolphin Stadium in uh, right. Miami. Okay. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing at the, <laughs> at the start. And I remember uh, standing out in, uh, in the parking lot, you know, during one of the punch outs. and. And we were talking about, uh, you know, sweets. And I said, sweets? What are sweets? And because that was the first stadium that had uh, multiple sweets. It had 215 sweets. And we said, yeah, people are going to pay to uh, stay in these sweets. And I said, really? I said, yeah. And they're really worried that they're going to be able to have all those sweets occupied. And so it was just a really, uh, it was like designing, you know, 20 restaurants yeah. at the same time yeah. and it was like whoa so yeah. it was a lot of fun though that yeah. was a first project yeah. wow first, yeah my first and one and you're still here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, this is back in the cleveland days so you know oh, it wasn't wow. even living in florida you know so yeah. yeah bill what about you well you know interestingly enough we're we're sitting here today and we're in montreal and uh my first project was not in Montreal, but I was working with Keith and Jim Little and Doug Harley uh, with Harley Little Associates in those days. So the year was 1974. We were going in, into 1975, and they had this big project that's very well known. This building still today in Toronto. Royal Bank of Canada came to us, mm -hmm. and uh, they said, we're building a new multi-story mega complex in downtown Toronto. We had just finished the CN Tower, which was, is, a, is a very iconic building. But um, they came to me and said, we, we want you to be the project manager, and they're doing an ultra-exclusive private dining facility, executive dining facility up on the top of this tower. And that was the first time, because I, I basically had been doing management advisory work, but they wanted me to do both MAS as well as the design of this. So it was intensive. I, uh, I lost a few nights sleep before <laughs> this uh, was completed. I think we all did. Yeah. <laughs> On, on his project or our project? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> James, what about you? The first one where I was from beginning to the end, project manager, designer, everything was a hospital in North Atlanta uh, at that time. And it's not quite as long ago as his, but you know, it was uh, early eighties. And uh, it was it was a learning, it really was a learning opportunity because there's so much going into a hospital that was different from schools and everything else that I had been doing, uh, some hospitality, hotel and club work. So uh, it's just one of those things where you, I used to open up magazines. Like I had the FES magazine of Bill when he had hair, you know, <laughs> but really? you a know, long time uh, ago <laughs> when he was, a, he was a young lion way back when, but I would, I would go back through those old magazines and look at things and read things like, you know, what Keith Marshall said or what Jim Little said, or, you know, Sini or just whoever, uh, mm -hmm. when they were being interviewed to learn things. I'm sure F.E. and S. will be glad to hear that as well. <laughs> okay, it was <laughs> magazine. No, that's okay. They're a great. They're a good partner of FCSI. Yeah, I know, Howard, what about you? Well, I I guess I was kind of in a different place. I was I was hired as a draftsman, so I had a long time. I probably had about four or five years into learning food service because that's not what I where I came from. Right. You know, um, I came from a family of mathematicians and, uh, and teachers, and so, but I love drafting. So uh, when I started my career as a draftsman and ended up basically running the production of the, of the uh, firm I was with, Ramal Gatlin, I'll say. And uh, I, I guess I took projects to the end after Stan and Sal Romano uh, got the projects. Okay. So, so I was more of the production guy, but then I did the meetings and went into the field, did the punches, and I would probably say the first one I did was a uh, Supermax prison uh, in New York, uh, New, uh, upstate New York. And that had to be a pretty interesting, you know, I, I think it was, it, it was new construction. So my first two, that was non-populated. My, the one I went into that was the most interesting was in Jersey, fully populated, which was a max prison. Um, but it, I, I think with, with design and all, um, it, it was really interesting for me, and still to this day, to see from pencil on paper to stainless in the field, and how it all came together, because that's where you, that's really where you get your education on this stuff. I mean, you could put it on paper all day, but once you get in the field and something you drew this big is as big as this table, and, and seeing how it's connected, how it operates, how it starts up, and, and handing it over to the client in the end, you know, it, it really is seeing it finished and the relationship that you build with every client that we've had, you know, that's. That's so cool. So James brought up a, a, a thing that I want to expand on a little bit, and that is, do you do you look at other works, other people's work over the years, like your competitors and stuff, whether it's in a, a publication or whether you know they've done, you, they got a job that you didn't get and you ended up being there, so you kind of just wander around the place and look at it. Are, do you go and do that and look oh, at your competitors? Yeah. 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 I, 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 look, I look at everybody's work. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mean, I'm sure we've all done it. I, to this day, I'll go into a restaurant and if I can get in there, if I can talk to somebody and they can walk me through the kitchen. Yeah. My wife used to say, oh, here he goes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, but, but I think I, I look at yeah. everybody's work because everybody does something. Like, I would say there's a niche. There's, there's something different about every project. Right? Well, you and learn from each project. It, every too. single one of them. Man. Uh, if somebody says to you, no, I never look at anybody other's work in this business, I would be uh, a little concerned. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you, you just pick up a little tidbit, you know, yeah, on yeah, each yeah, project. Yeah, exactly. You know, even like you say, thumbing through magazines and say, hmm, hadn't really thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. So guess what's going to be on the next yeah, project? Yeah, same, same piece of equipment located in a different place for a different reason. 
you know, and, and that was really cool. And I've had people come to me and say, gee, I saw that your project in a project showcase or whatever, and I like this type of design. This is unique what you did as a solution. And I, I feel great. And hopefully, I, you know, I say to myself, it, it, was, it might have been a great learning exercise for other people too, and vice versa for me when I look at, you know. Yeah, I was going to say, do you ever reach out when you see something you're like, that was really genius. Or that was really, reach out to them and go, oh, kudos. Yeah. I love doing that. I, and you know, also what you said, Bill, really triggered something in my mind, which is we have to remain humble and in a constant learning mode. I would say if, if I advised anyone about anything in life, it's stay open, stay humble, learn, always learn and always thank people who've done a great job and congratulate them because we all, we need that, all of us. Yeah. So how critical of you are, are you of your own work when you're done? So now you've done it, you've drawn it out, it's on paper, you go out to the field, you're doing your final punch list. Is there, is there many times you look at it and go, oh, why did I do that? <laughs> or, or it's done and- We, we, can't, we can't admit that here. <laughs> Well, it may not be a bad thing. You just maybe just looked at it a different way this time. Or and not even the one you're working on now. You look back five years ago or 20 years ago and, and you go back into that. I can't story. believe I did that. Yeah. There, there, there's always every project. I think you've got one thing that you're looking at and you're going, mm, shouldn't have done that. Won't do that again. You know, well, and, yeah. and it could be even as simple as. Why did we do that over shelf 24 inches? It really mm -hmm. should have been 16 or, or maybe it should have been 24 and it was 12, you know. Yeah. And you know, that's, that's something you take pictures and you go back and you look at your folks on yeah. Monday morning meeting and you go through the job and you go, see, why well, don't do this anymore. Yeah. Don't do that. I'm sorry. Well, it, but if you have, let, let's say, and I know all of us have been there with this situation. So you go out, let's say you're one of the senior people in your firm, which we all have been and are. And you go out to a job site and you bring two or three of your staff with you who are punching the job. And you're looking around and one of the younger folks goes, gee, uh, I see this or that. And you sort of say, yeah, you're right. So you have to be very introspective and, you know, straight on with, with you use it as a learning exercise. But we've all been there. Oh, back to the humble part that Karen brought up. Yeah, I mean, you just have to keep learning. It, 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 it's, a, you know, it's a, what you said, it's interesting to me, and it, it fascinates me as an MAS consultant, how you all take these little squares and circles and things that are this big on paper <laughs> and try to envision how high a shelf should be or shouldn't be and how, how those little things on paper translate to real things in in real facilities. Well, and and it grows that and it grows that little problem that was this big yeah. to something that's huge. <laughs> I I did talk about mistakes, right? So it's not it's not just as, it's not just the things you see when you walk through a punch. It's the things that are hidden that you have to look for, right? So you know me. I I'm I'm, I'm a detail guy. I love fabrication. I you know the layouts, all that other stuff is great. But I love how things are built. So we go into this project. Um, me and a buddy of mine from uh, we did a punch in the restaurant. And we're looking around for the disconnect, this this little solenoid in the counter. We're like, where is it? And the fabricator's with us. And we're all looking for it. I'm like, I know exactly where it is. And we open up this door and it's like behind something, under something, up. I'm like, if that ever goes, how the hell do you get to that? You know, yeah. and and we called the fabricator. He came out. He was pissed that his man missed it. You know, we're pissed that we didn't think about we should have done that in that drawing and put it over here. And then you have to be in the field to find a clean way to fix it. So now you're cutting the hole, making access, and how do you hide the hole kind of thing. You know, so those, those things, like you're saying, these little things that you find in the field, like you're saying with the heights of counters and these kind of things, those are things that you take home and on the next job you don't do it. And then from there, it's right until it's wrong again. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, yeah, further to that, one of the things that you know, Ron Couser, uh, when I was you know, uh, mm. just a draftsman, you know, um, you know, he would go out and take slides 
you know, and so he'd have, have his, his, his uh, what do you call those cassettes, you know, full of slides, full of slides. And so uh, we'd sit in this little musty conference room, you know, in, in Chagrin Falls. And, and so he, he, he said, okay, what's wrong with this picture? And, uh, and you're always kind of afraid, well, I'm not really sure. You know? <laughs> And then every once in a while, I said, there's nothing wrong. This is a great design, you know. The, oh, a yeah. little trick. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. So I, I still do that to this day. But Ron was famous for his slides. You still carry around the slide decks? No, no, no I'm just no, kidding. No. <laughs> well, yeah, matter of fact. <laughs> but, you know, that was just a great learning curve, you know, that, uh, and, it, and it really helped our, our staff, you know, yeah. to learn things, you know, because you can't take everybody out in the field, or, or, especially mm -hmm. nowadays. You know, so if you can use that as something to, to build on, and what is wrong with this? Or, or this is a great design. No, yeah. well, I, I love it when MASs, Karen, yeah. when people, their MASs, uh, you know, you do a design that MAS comes in after the fact, they're like, what were you thinking? You know, is it, you know, based on program? I do work. have to say that I, I have made that comment. Uh, 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 and, and recently, um, I made that comment in a brand new situation. And I, every, in every station, micro restaurants, a food hall, I, where are the drop spaces? Where do you put a hot pan? Where do you where do you put the dirty saute pans? I mean, it was just. <laughs> what were you thinking? The dots didn't connect, right? <laughs> the dots didn't connect, and you know I know kitchens are getting smaller and all of that, but you have to have places to put things, yeah. you know, and and set things and work and. and it, but there hadn't been a menu. Mm. There had not been a concept or a menu predetermined, and I know this happens all the time to all of you. Yes. And as you know, it's something I have been harassing FCSI about forever, such that in the old days, MAS consultants were not invited mm -hmm. to seminars, equipment seminars. And one of the things I am most proud of is I have been to <laughs> don't tell how I many. I don't know how many <laughs> yeah. equipment because I cannot be an intelligent menu designer, concept designer, if I don't know what equipment can do for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So equipment really turns me on because mm -hmm. then I think, oh, you could do that with that piece of equipment. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the whole process of putting that MAS piece mm -hmm. up front exactly. and working with the designers and the architects to make it a complete, you know, completed puzzle, if you will. Well, it's not only that. I mean, I, I think in, you know, decades ago, like you're saying, Karen, uh, a lot of MAS didn't do a lot about with equipment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And with that education being up front, they can kind of guide based on the menu equipment to be utilized exactly. because now the client has some education of what they want to do and what they need and that helps us do our job as well so that we're not putting we're, we're more cognizant of the equipment that we provide and right. build around yeah. to to get to the point of your menu kind you know, of. and it's it's uh, the menu piece is huge with regards to equipment it's also huge with regards to labor and you know, a lot of MAS work in, involves producing pro formas and trying to figure out what the labor model needs to be for an operation to be successful. Mm -hmm. And equipment, well, especially today, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. With, with, you know, every, cost of everything going this way and available people going that way, <laughs> uh, equipment can be a godsend. Mm -hmm. It, it really can. And so trying to engineer menus to fit smaller spaces with fewer skilled people in the kitchen, equipment is a big piece of that solution. Yeah. And I, I think FCSI has done a great job with bringing the sponsors in and setting up the training to where we can go to their factories and see yes. things and get, yes. and get training on combi ovens in general, yeah. 
okay, we learn things, and then all of a sudden, all right, now show me why yours is different. Yeah, you sure. know, so well, it's I like the training yes. and the learning because I used as a baby draftsman way back when. He was a baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I was you clean were... shaven. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. But we, but we, I would go to factories every now and then. There weren't that many that you would go to. And I enjoyed it because I'd get a chance to meet other consultants and listen. I mean, I remember sitting there w with Fred Schmidt and I think oh, Ron wow. Couser and somebody else at a, in a hotel hospitality suite. Hmm. And I just sat there and listened yeah. to yeah. what they were saying because, and, and you've heard me say this before, it's, it's like it used to be, you know, this, this is my world, my projects. Yeah. I'm not going to tell yeah. you my secrets. But now with the internet, I can see what you were probably working on last week if I wanted to dig in mm -hmm. through it and find stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so well, it's, but I enjoy learning from other consultants. Yeah. And those, those education pr provider programs that FCSI offers is, is a big thank you and a kudos, and I'm gonna make her embarrassed yeah. now, but this lady at the oh, table yeah. had yeah. a lot to do with mm -hmm. that. Um, you know, when I was with FCSI in the, in the late 90s, it was kind of frowned upon. It was if you went to a manufacturer and, and if you couldn't afford to go and they paid your way, you were kicked out of FCSI yeah. because it was considered a conflict of interest or it was an ethical, it was against the code of ethics. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't until Karen and, and, and Joyce and, and some mm -hmm. others got involved and said, hey, we need to do things differently. And so then that, the, that program evolved to where we started to embrace it more and realizing that 80% of the FCSI consultants are small business owners. So five people or less in our membership. You can't afford to go to 10 of those a year on, as a small You're business right. owner. Yeah. So if the manufacturer is willing to do it, then why not let them do it? And as an, as an association, we looked at it and said, yes, it's better for us. It makes us look better as a group, as a membership organization, if they're better educated. And we kind of got out of the way and, and quit quit tripping over our own things and said, let's let them do it. And this lady right here had a tremendous amount to do with that. And, and I want to find out from all of you, we used to talk about keeping our own little fences up and protecting our own little intellectual uh, property and things of that nature. And, and that's changed over the last, even the last 12 years that I've been managing FCSI. Um, does collaboration with competitors scare you or excite you? I love it. Yeah, that's been one of my key I love it. loves in uh, this business, collaborating as much as yeah. I can, creating joint venture partnerships, the whole deal. Yeah, it, it, it's just, I, I love that seeing situations from different prisms mm. and everyone has a different way of thinking about a situation. Yeah. And it, it collaborating with other people allows um, it allows group think to not occur. You know, when you're just working with your own self or, or the same people all the time, you can kind of develop what I call a group think mentality. And when other people come into projects and, and I work with them, it's like, oh, okay. Thanks for sharing that perspective. I wouldn't have thought about it that way. James, what about you? Maybe when I was er younger, I would now try and shy away from it, for, but from now, no, I definitely see the possibilities and the reasons to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm not afraid of somebody going in and taking a client. It's like, you know, we're coming together as a joint venture for a reason. Like I said, you've got the combined knowledge and the history and being able to, you know, do yeah. different things. Yeah. Dick? I would say, uh, um, I, when I look at a joint venture, it has to be somebody I like and trust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I grew our firm internationally basically from our FCSI contacts. And, got, and Dick, you're so right. I, I spent a long time looking at my friends and colleagues all around the world and cherry picking those guys I could trust completely yeah. and knew and have worked with. And it became very successful. And I, it just, it just made my career you know, it's great in my, in my mind. It's fun. Yeah, I, I, I have to say, I agree with all of that. It is definitely a trust thing. But the other thing that I think is really cool because we do different things, you know, depending on the project, um, with, the, with the 
trust factor already in the game, mm -hmm. right? Um, knowing my colleagues and what their strong points are, when you have a project, you know who you can call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, it's not like we have to figure it out. You know, like if, if we get a stadium, I know Bill is strong in stadiums, you know, the relationship's already there. So I know I can call him for collaboration. If we're doing schools or, or healthcare or, or however it goes around the table, yeah. you know, it's like we, we have the comfort and not only with the trust, but we have the comfort of the knowledge that's behind it, you know, and that just makes a collaboration that much better. You know, I, 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 I won't name names, uh, but many oh, years ago at, at a FCSI uh -oh. conference, Good thing, it might be um, us. <laughs> well, I think my second one uh, in New Orleans, uh, I actually was, was uh, moderating a panel about MAS because when I think about it, it's very strange. Okay, when would that have been? 12, 14 years ago, almost, maybe um, more. Almost 20, I was 20. gonna say. <gasps> Time flies when you're having fun, huh? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. Head here. It we, was a, we, all, we all look so good, yeah. And you know, and that, so we, we had the panel because a lot of people in FCSI you know, didn't know what MAS, MAS was, that, was yeah, right? And, and, and there was, uh, well, no, I'm not gonna name names. <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, there was a designer, another MAS person, and Rod Collins. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. Oh, so much. And uh, <laughs> the designer said, at least was candid, and said, why would I want to collaborate with you as an MAS consultant when I can keep that money for myself. <laughs> yeah, I've heard those conversations before. And it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess I won't be collaborating much with you, but, it, but I bring it up because, you know, you'd also need to share the wealth. Yeah, sure. And it, it, it just really stuck with me how, again, if you can build in MAS work to a proposal up front, yeah. it's hard to go back. But I've had designers call me and say, look, you know, I'm, I should, they should have used you sooner, but now I'm having a hard time with this. This is not the kind of work I want to be doing. Can you come in now? Now you're going to have to propose yeah. another fee on top of what I've already arranged, so, um, but th that really hit me. It's like, okay, come on, come on. Well, and that goes both ways, right? It does. Because yeah. you get, you bring designers in once in a while as well. Oh, so. all, all, constantly, yeah. Yeah, Very good. yeah this, this industry, we're the biggest industry on the planet. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, once you get here, there isn't any place you can't go, Yeah. you know? So you, if you don't find something you like in one place, there's always some place in food service that, that you can go and take your knowledge and learn more from. And you're never doing the same thing ever, twice. Ever, ever. That's the best part. It may be a school and a school and a school or a country club, but they're all different. I mean, yeah. every, That's the beauty part of it. Keeps us all going. It is. You know, that one size fits all. No, it does not. You just don't punch the clock in and punch the clock out. It's a different business. Every design, every menu, every everything. Yeah, is different from the previous one. You could be working on a coffee kiosk in the morning and working on a 100,000 meal uh, yeah. central food facility yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and every now and then you just want to go, Mommy, take it away. <laughs> Bill's done that all his life. Look. <laughs> That's how I lost all my hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, thank you all again. Uh, that wraps up this edition of Party of Five. Uh, stay tuned for our next episode. But until then, Cheers. 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 <laughs>